Hey everyone, welcome to part 5 of my SQLized tutorial series, where in this video I'm just going to be testing the knowledge that we've learned so far. Specifically, what we're going to be doing is creating a model and querying it, basically using all the information we learned in the previous videos and putting it all together. But so I'm going to have the instructions posted up here on what to do, and what I recommend is at least attempting to do this yourself, so try and solve this yourself, and then if you get stuck at any point, just um, follow along with me, because of course I'm going to be going over how to do this, but I believe the best way to learn is at least attempting this yourself, and then um, seeing what you can do. But so I'd recommend uh, maybe pause the video now, attempt to try and do this yourself, and then um, I'll just, and when you're ready, just press play and we'll see if you get the same answers. Let's get on with the video. And so of course, I'm gonna post the test right on here. You can probably already see it now. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a table called student. I'm gonna do all this in a separate file. So let's do um, new file, it's called practice one, because we're probably gonna do a couple more of these. Um, and the first one I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to copy and paste this information. If you want to remember how to actually set up the connection, uh, watch the first video, but I'm just going to actually have that already implemented. But the first thing that we're going to do is we want to create a table called student. And so remember, the way to do this is with the SQLizes define method. And then let me close this window real quick. And then if you can remember, automatically SQLize will pluralize things. So we want this though to be called student singular. And so let's do this and then let's go into our third argument here. And the, if you remember the key is freeze table name and we're going to set that equal to true so that no matter what um, this won't be pluralized and the name of the database will just be student. And also you can see that we don't actually want any um, column for updated at or when the record was created, and to do, get rid of this, we use timestamps, and we will set that equal to false. And now, this second argument here is where we actually specify our column names. And the first one is a student, it's called student ID. Oh, I believe I forgot the quote for it, because this will be an object, and then we want it to be an integer. So we'll do type, and we've already um, imported data types, we're just gonna do data types, Dot integer, and then we want it to be a primary key. So we just set primary key like this, equal to true. And then we also want it to auto increment. And that's auto increment, so that's true. So basically each user, or each time a student is inserted in this database, the number will go up starting from one and then two and then so on. And now another column that we want is, is name, so the student's name. Pass another object. We want this to be varchar255. And if you remember, what that is with SQLize is just data types.string. And also what we want is we don't want null values. So the way to do this is we just set allow null to false, because we don't we um, don't want them to be allowed. And then we would need to validate. The name is between the length of four and 20 characters. So if you can remember, the way to do this is with the key validate then we pass in an object, and then the key length, and the length we want is four to 20, like this. So that should be good for this. Next column we need um, is favorite underscore class. So we want this to have a type of varchar of 25. So that is data types dot string, and then you can remember we can pass in how long we want it to be. So this will be string 25, like this, which basically means it can't exceed more than 25 characters in the favorite class column. And we want to also set a default value. So default value of computer science. So their default favorite class is computer science. Next is a column called school year. Let's set that to an integer, so type be data types dot integer and then also it doesn't allow null values so we'll do allow null to false so they can't pass in null values and then we have one more column left called subscribe to wit code so that's the name of our column and then we are passing in it's going to be tiny int which essentially means boolean so we're going to do type to be data types Dot boolean and then the default value is going to be 
uh, true. Did I set that up right? Yep, default value is going to be true. Okay, so this should be the table um, it's in its entirety. So we need to actually create it. And so to do this, if you remember, we use the sync method. So we're gonna do student, I think I actually capitalized it, didn't I? Yeah, student. So what this returns here, it returns the model, then that's actually inserted into our database with sync. And if you can also remember, this returns a promise. So what we're gonna do is let's just log database, or not database, but um, table, or even for SQLize model synced successfully. And then we can also, if there's any errors, let's log that. So we'll do error log ERR. So this method, if you remember, is we'll actually put this table into our database. So now let's just run this. We have node practice1.js. Oh, we got a error, line 31. Oh, that's why it wasn't highlighted. So set that to true. Okay, let's try this again. Model sync successfully. And so if you can remember, we set this into SQLize video. So let's go into MySQL Workbench and refresh this. We have the student table. Let's see if it's correct. So let's click on Table Inspector, go to Columns. And so we have favorite class, what's the first one? Student ID, it's an integer, it's um, a primary key. You can check this um, on indexes. Yep, primary. B tree here is basically a data structure on how to um, access these values quicker. But it's a primary key, um, which is good. And then it auto increments, so we got that correct. Next is the name, which is varchar255. Doesn't allow null values, so nullable is no. Um, validate name is between length. I don't think we can actually check that on here, but just I'm um, gonna have to assume that's right. And then our favorite class is varchar25. Default value is computer science. We got that right. School year, integer, doesn't allow null values. Nope, doesn't allow them. And then subscribe to wit code. Type is tiny int of one, so it could basically be zero or one. And one equates to true. And so, yep, yeah, we got our table right. So now let's move in. Um, to the next part of this test. And so the next thing we're gonna be doing now is um, bulk creating some users. So let's go into here. And so when our, um, let's just work within here, just in case um, we have to update the model or anything. But anyway, let's, we have to bulk create some users, but we also have to do it with validation. And if you can remember from previous videos, if you bulk create, which means you create a lot of users at once, validation, so the validation we made is right here, uh, the length, between four at minimum and 20 at maximum. This will not be followed, or this validation won't be applied unless we specify it if we're bulk creating users. But anyway, let me show you this. So we'll do student bulk create. And of course we pass in an array of objects, each object being a new student that we want to insert. So the first student ID, because that is um, auto incrementing, you don't actually have to specify that, it'll do it itself. But the name between four and character, four and 20 characters, a string, it can't be null. So let's do, um, actually I believe it was just name. First, let's do wit code. And then next is we are going to insert a favorite class. So our favorite class, let's just leave that to be default to computer science. Um, so, and then school year, you can't have that as false. Let's do school year, I don't know, let's do 12 year senior in high school, even though I'm older than that, but let's just have that as that. And then subscribe to wit code is also default value of true. So let's just leave the default values for that user there. But then remember, as I said, it takes, validations will be skipped unless we pass in the key here, validate, and set it to true. This is not the case if we are just creating one user, but because we are doing a bulk create or creating multiple users, that is the case. But now let's create some more, let's have, um name of Michael, and then school year, let's do 11. Uh, did we skip anything? Favorite class, let's do, favorite class, let's do, I don't know, basket, basket weaving, like this. And then uh, 
Let's do another thing. The school year, favorite class, subscribe to wit code. Let's do subscribe to wit code. Let's do false for Mike. Not sure why, but let's have that. And then let's just create, so you've got the gist of it now. Now I'm just gonna create some other users. Okay, so we've both created our users. So now let's just run this and check they're inserted. So we've made one, two, three, four, Five. five users, five, or not five users, five students. So let's do node, let's run this. Executing, insert into student. You can see it lists each um, thing that it's gonna be inserting, and then the values, null, wit code, computer science, null, Michael, basket weaving, 11, and all that. So let's go to my school workbench. Let's click on here, and let's change this to select all from student. So let's, uh, do this. Awesome. And you can see everyone was inserted correctly. And now let's just go over the validation thing. Let's say we have, what was it, 4 and 20, I believe. Let's, let's get rid of all these so we don't get any duplicates. But let's insert a name of just, say, W. Let's see what happens. And so you can see we, of course, got an error. The reason I believe um, we need to actually return this, let's just see if it says the actual validation. There we go. So we just needed to return this promise so it gets caught in this catch or else the chain would be broken. But so we get a validation error, validation length name on field because this is not um, greater than four or less than 20 characters. So now let's just do another username of wit code rocks and let's insert that and it should be working. There we go. And then let's just double check. I'm insert all or select all from students. And there we go, wit code rocks. So that one was inserted. This one also here was just um, when I was just uh, checking something in the meantime, but just forget about that one. But now let's go back in, clear this console. Let's make it smaller. And now the last thing we need to do is query the table. So let's get rid of this last part of our test is querying the table, and we want to retrieve the name of every student whose favorite class is computer science or they are subscribed to Witcode. So the way we can do this is you remember the method find all. What we want to do is we want to find all where. And where we want to find is whose favorite class is computer science or they are subscribed to Witcode. So let me just press a mark here and let's do the key we're going to do op dot or pass an object, and we want favorite class to be computer science, or they are subscribed to Witcode, which would be subscribe to Witcode. True. So let's do this. Let's also return this, and let's do a. We just had a dot cache, let's just do it then. And of course we want to see the data. So we're gonna do data and then log data like this. So this should work, let's give it a go. And it looks like we got returned a few rows. Yep, we got Wicode rocks, because their favorite class is computer science. So I have to Wicode is two. Um, and remember we can clean this up. So actually, because it's, it returned an array, so let's do, if you can remember also from the videos, we did four each, and then we're gonna loop through it. And let's do, let's log our element, and if we wanna clean it up, you remember the method that we were using in the other videos is to JSON. So let's do this, now let's see what it looks like. Awesome, that looks a lot cleaner, and we have, so now do wit code, computer science, we have Freddie, their favorite um, class is math, it's not computer science, but let's actually show you the query. So we're selecting everything, all this stuff, where the favorite class equals computer science or they're subscribed to wit code. But actually looking back, I think on the challenge we're just supposed to select the name. So what I can do in here is also pass another 
argument called attributes. And then, of course, fix this here. And then what we pass in here is the attributes we want. And one of them, or actually it's not an object, but it is an array. And that, what attribute we want, I believe, is we just want to get the name of every one. So let's run that again. And there we go. So now select name where their favorite class computer science or their described to wit code. So we have wit code, Freddy, we, and wit code rocks. And now let's move on to the final challenge. And so for this one, we want to count the total number of students in each school year and give the returned column the alias num students. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get an attribute. We don't need um, this where anymore, but we are going to have to use some um, SQLized functions. And one of them is if we want to use an alias, remember we should pass in a nested array. If you don't remember this, I'd recommend just going back and watching those videos, but then we're going to do SQLize.fn. And the function we want to do is count, because we want to count the total number of students in each school year. So we want to do that. We want to count. And then the column we want to perform this count on is the school year column. So we want to count that, and then we want to give it the alias. Actually, that's incorrect. That should be here, because this is the second argument in the fn function, the column we want to perform it on. And then this is where our alias is. And we want to give it the alias num students. And then we also want to group it. So we need to not only have attributes here, but also group. And what we want to group this by is school year. All right, so I think this should check out. If not, we'll get an error. Let me clean this up by just simpler. So the attributes we want is this here. So let's try running this. Awesome, so we got num students three, but we also need to select the school year because it doesn't really make much sense here. Um, school year, and let's run this. And so in school year 12, we have three students. School year 11, we have one, and all the others we have one. Let's double check that in here. Let's just do run this. I see three 12s, yep, one, two, three, and I see one of every other. So, yep, I guess we checked out good in that. So I hope you um, hope you found these challenges um, or these problems not too hard. They're going to get harder as we move along in this series. I don't know what I'm going to do the next one, but the um, next video I'm going to be working on is going to be um, more finder methods. So we've been using mainly find all. I'm going to be showing you a few more methods, but um, thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.